Spider-Man Web of Shadows is the first true single player experience after the Spider-Man movie games, and considering that this title was made by Shaba Games, I was a bit skeptical upon returning to this game after not playing it for so many years, but the little doubt that I had was quickly erased only moments in, as right from the start the game sets the tone for what the rest of the game will be like. The story for Web of Shadows is different than any Spider-Man game we had gotten before. To start off with, the city is already in chaos and when the game begins, we have already gone through a lot of the events that led up to that moment. Before we even get a chance to grasp what's going on, we see Eddie inside Venom and Mary Jane still being a damsel in distress, and then flash back all the way to the beginning before any of this had even started. Taking the approach where you play the game through one flashback was a risk, but I think it paid off. Since you play the majority of the story through just the one flashback, it felt natural and not forced. Unlike some games that try to tell the story through constant flashbacks that ruin the immersion and never allow you to get situated, this story flows well and it's easy to see how the city deteriorates from where it was at the start. The main gimmick that makes this story different than the normal storytelling is the ability to make choices that align with either the red suit, which is good, and the symbiote suit, which is bad. Each choice comes within the same situation, with different things happening depending on what you decided to choose. What's great about these choices is that they're never hard to make, like whatever you decide to do is because you want to be good or because you want to be bad. It's not like Telltale games or Dark Picture games where the actual choices themselves are hard to make because you don't know what's going to happen or because people could die. In this game, if you make a choice, the only consequences are how you're viewed by the public and the other heroes that you meet over the course of the game. Because of this, it entices the player to make the choices based on the suit that they prefer to play with. For my playthrough, I chose nothing but the symbiote suit choices. Why you may ask? Simply because you get the romance black cat. I don't know about y'all, but when choosing between black cat and MJ, I'm going with black cat every time. MJ is literally useless, but I digress. As you progress through the game, the story evolves in a certain direction regardless of the choices you make. The tone starts off more on the positive side, but as Venom causes more chaos, the whole situation just gets worse and worse, giving off this doom and gloom type of vibe for the rest of the game. The story isn't really progressed through the missions themselves, it's more like you complete a bunch of missions and eventually one of them will move the story forward. This isn't a bad thing, but if you were expecting the typical mission, cutscene, mission, cutscene sequence, then you may be disappointed. Once you get deep into the story, you may find yourself wondering how long this flashback sequence is, because as I mentioned before, the majority of the story takes place in the flashback. By the time you finish, there's only a couple hours of the game left. The timing of when to return to real time couldn't have been placed in a better spot, because as soon as you feel like the game is beginning to drag, you snap back to the moment from the opening and pick up with those events. By the end of the story, you face the consequences of your choices from each mission, with the ending being a reflection of the path that you decided to follow. Overall, this story exceeded my expectations and felt like the devs wanted to make a zombie type game, but with Spider-Man. Having symbiotes take over the city in place with zombies, and place Spider-Man right in the middle of all the chaos is genius. If you're looking for a unique Spider-Man story, then this game definitely delivers. Before we get to the gameplay, I had to shed some light on this voice acting. The voice acting in the game was top notch, as each character sounded great. But even more, I thought that the characters sounded like what they actually should sound like. For example, Mike Vaughn, who voices Spider-Man, sounded like the nerdiest Spider-Man ever, as every line he gave just sounded like Peter was a total geek underneath the suit. MJ, it's me. How are you doing? I'm okay. I'm helping my friend a sort of shelter. Hey, listen, I have a crazy idea that might save us. I'm going to Riker's prison to get a mad scientist to make a bomb to destroy the sin things without hurting any of the people. I know the tinkerer's in there. Uh-huh. Of course, I'm going to have to break him out of prison because S.H.I.E.L.D. and the police are after me, but... Uh-huh. Mary Jane? I'll be breaking the law. Okay, okay, look. You have to do okay. what you think is right. Thanks. Gotta go. Okay, time to do something drastic. Other voice actors like Trisha Helfer, Robert Wisdom, Steve Blum, and others all made the characters come to life in the way they needed to. The voice acting helped convey the emotion that they felt with everything that was going on within the city. The gameplay is similar to what we've seen in the movie games with some new additions that make the whole experience different than the previous entries. Just like the older games, we're able to swing all around New York City, going from rooftop to rooftop, climbing up walls, and running around the streets. 
The swing speed is slow in the beginning, with you being able to upgrade that by collecting these small spiders located on rooftops all over the city. Once you collect enough of these, you'll be able to move up a level, increasing your health and swing speed, which is useful towards the later half of the game. One thing that was done really well was the traversal, especially while on or alongside buildings. Web zipping from place to place is very easy to do and doesn't feel like a chore, with you always moving forward but in the direction you want simply by pressing a button. Then when you want to climb up a building, you have multiple options. You can crawl up, run up, or web zip up every structure, all being useful in certain situations depending on the mission. What this game did better than any Spider-Man game before it was the gameplay while you're on the side of the buildings. When going up buildings, you're going to run into enemies, both on the building or flying around it. What's great is while crawling or running, you can approach the enemy and attack them while standing on the side of the building. You can perform attacks without falling off too, as once you finish performing a combo, Spider-Man will just remain stuck to the wall, making it easy to repeat combos while waves of enemies continue to attack you from all angles. The combat system takes what was laid out in the earlier games and builds upon it, giving you even more control over your specific Spider-Man. First off, you have the ability to switch in between the red and black suit at will, allowing you to pull off suit-specific combos whenever you want. When attacking the enemies, you can press attack multiple times to pull off normal attacks in both the air or the ground, with you being able to change combos by delaying your inputs for a certain number of seconds. If you press the triangle or Y button, you can shoot webs or use grabs, which sets you up for even more combos. You can upgrade all of your attacks by accessing the Upgrades tab in the menu. Here you can upgrade your ground, air, wall, super attacks, and your web shot or tendril attack depending on the suit. What's cool about the upgrades is that you can choose which combos within the category that you want to upgrade. So if you wanted to perform a certain ground attack combo but not one of the others, you can unlock just that combo but leave the others for the remainder of your playthrough. Doing this for both suits will help you craft the ultimate Spider-Man, one that will play exactly the way you want it to. It's worth noting that even if you only use one suit, it's worth upgrading both suits because there are situations late in the game where it's not beneficial to wear one suit versus the other, so if you neglected one suit the whole playthrough, you might be in for a bit of trouble. Similar to Spider-Man Friend or Foe, this game had the addition of sidekicks that would help you in battle. The choices you made determine which allies you would be able to fight alongside during each fight. You meet a nice handful of heroes and villains during the story, with many of them being sidekicks that can help you later on. But if you choose to be evil, but you want a hero like Luke Cage to be your ally, you're out of luck, since in order to have him as a partner, you have to choose the good path. Another great example of how your choices matter, and that there are consequences to going down whatever path you decide to follow. Since I chose the Dark Suit path, the allies I could choose from was Black Cat, Vulture, Rhino, and Electro. Each ally had their own attack moves and served as valuable companions that actually helped destroy enemies instead of just getting in the way. You could access the allies by looking at the HUD and scrolling left or right to pick which ally you wanted and then holding down the directional arrow to call them in. Once called in, they would remain for the duration of the red bar that is under their character icon. After the red bar runs out, they will disappear until the bar is refilled. If you're in the middle of a fight and want to recall your ally, you can press the up arrow and they'll disappear, with your bar remaining at the point it was at the moment of recall. The allies help make it feel like you're not the only hero or villain in New York, making everything feel connected. The mission structure is similar to other games, but this time, instead of going to the main menu and looking to see what you needed to do next, you would return to certain characters where they would give you the tasks that you needed to complete. When choosing which tasks to do, the main mission is always the first mission on top, followed by optional missions underneath and dialogue segments at the very bottom. After completing a mission, you would just keep going to whatever character gave you the mission and keep completing them until you unlocked a cutscene, where you would then go to a new location after watching the cutscene. This formula may get old to some, but since they rotate the characters you take missions from, it is a good job of staying fresh. What does seem like it drags is some of the missions themselves. Some missions are really exciting with you fighting iconic villains or heroes in their symbiote form, while others are simple protect or escort missions. Especially once the city starts falling apart, the missions tend to be a bit repetitive and there were times I found myself wondering when I was going to do something that would actually move the plot forward. 
If the missions were a bit more dynamic in terms of structure, that might have made them feel less like a slog while in between the major story moments. Outside of the missions, you can complete side activities that are littered across the map. These could be killing symbiotes, to rescuing citizens, to stopping normal criminals, but they are all reminiscent of similar activities in the past games. Each activity is represented by small circles that are found within your area on the map, and when a crime is happening, a message on the screen will appear, letting you know that something's going on. Compared to Spider-Man 3, this game did a better job at distinguishing what objective was what, making it easy to know where to go and what to do. Having the HUD in-game and in the pause menu be more detailed and thorough helped eliminate unnecessary frustration and confusion, making the entire gameplay loop flow even better. There are plenty of different enemies that you fight during the game, but outside of the soldiers, they all have one thing in common, they're symbiotes. So based off that fact, you would think that you would be fighting the same symbiotes over and over again, but that wasn't the case. You fight different symbiotes, all with various abilities and difficulties that make them unique from the others. For example, there's a type of creature that appears as a mix of symbiote and electro. These creatures are very annoying as you can climb poles and fire electric shots at you, interrupting your combos until you stop what you're doing and go after and destroy them. Having symbiotes take on the personality of their hosts was a great idea and made the enemies more memorable than they normally would be. But the devs took it a step further and had boss fights surrounding the villains who were consumed by the symbiote, having you fight symbiotic versions of that character. This was cool to see as the characters looked completely different than they did before, but had some unique identifier that let you know that they were different than the other symbiotes you were fighting. Speaking of boss fights, they were very fun and included some additional flair with the inclusion of QTEs that gave them some spice once you got towards the end of the fight. Unlike Spider-Man 3, these QTEs were developed better and weren't overly used so you never knew when they were going to pop up. The timing on them was forgiving as well, as if you were a little late with lining the button up within the circle, you had a second or two to recover and you could still execute the movement. The boss fights made you pay attention to the boss's attack patterns and figure out which suit worked the best to get you through the fight. In the end, Spider-Man Web of Shadows is a great game that is the perfect blend of old and new creating an experience that feels fresh and rewarding. For those reasons, I'm going to give this game a 9. If you have not played Web of Shadows, I would highly recommend it as the ability to switch between both suits whenever you want, plus the unique story, makes this game stand out from the rest. If you're a Spider-Man fan, you're sure to have a great time playing this title. What did you think about Spider-Man Web of Shadows? Where would you rank this out of your favorite Spider-Man games? Let me know in the comment section below, and if you enjoyed the video, feel free to drop a like or subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. I'm not sure what's going on. Look, I'm a screw up, okay? You think? You do a heist for Kingpin, try to kill me. I was working from the inside. I got in over my head and I couldn't get out of it, and then you show up way too early and I get this huge rush from seeing you. You attacked me? And what do you mean I showed up early? I was doing it for you, so you would see that we were made for each other. Ooh.